This whole notion that this is, the black family has always been disintegrating, that, that is nonsense, that his, his studies go up to 1925, the great bulk of black families were intact, two-parent families up through 1925, and going all the way back through the era of slavery. So it is now only within our own time that we suddenly see this inevitable tragedy which the welfare system says it's gonna rush in to solve. It's been 40 years since the show aired, and Thomas Sowell's writings continue to illuminate. Whether the topic is race, crime, immigration, or so many other subjects, his scholarship remains as relevant as ever. Racists may prefer one race to another, but they prefer themselves to everybody else. Thomas Sowell is a trained economist. He's a sociologist who has written books about virtually every culture that's ever existed. He is a photographer. He is America's greatest contemporary living philosopher. I'm Jason Riley. I'm a journalist and author. For more than two decades, I have closely studied the life and work of Thomas Sowell. His story is both fascinating and illuminating. Tom makes a very, very good point that general principles affect everybody, whether they're black, brown, or purple. Tom is fearless not just in advancing unpopular opinions, but in venturing into areas of scholarship that had been untrodden. Tom Sowell is known for his views on economics, history, race, and politics. But I've also discovered some lesser-known aspects of his life. His research and his writings about late-talking children, and the fact that he is a highly regarded, world-traveling photographer. Over the next hour, we'll examine the life and career of Dr. Thomas Sowell, how he rose from humble beginnings to attend and teach at some of the nation's leading institutions, and became one of our foremost social commentators. You were a Marxist at one time in your life. What was your wake up to what was wrong with that line of thinking? Uh, facts. You're about to meet one of the greatest minds of the past half century. Because I was a Marxist at the time, and oh, they were they were they were appalled. And I said, you know, they they have very high intellectual standards, and I'm I'm not going to find uh, ideological soulmates. I was still a Marxist. Uh, I took a summer job in the government, I got into intern in economics, and it was seeing the government from the inside that uh, that turned me around. The the vision of the left, and I think many conservatives underestimate this, is really a more attractive vision. Uh, in itself. The only reason for not believing in it is that it, it doesn't work. But you don't, but you don't see that at the outset. If all, all you're looking at is just a theory, if the world were the way the left conceives it to be, it would be a better world than the way the right conceives it to be. It just happens that the, the world is not that way. For me, Thomas Sowell is that rarest of species, an honest intellectual. He spent a career putting truth above popularity. He's explored the answers to questions others were afraid to even ask. He's followed the facts where they lead and accepted the findings, however unpopular or politically incorrect. Thomas Sowell fervently stands by his well-researched beliefs, and he does not hesitate to let someone know if he thinks they're wrong. I've spent dozens of hours interviewing Tom and hundreds more selecting stories he's told over the years to others to help us understand what makes Thomas Sowell unique. Sowell's body of work is quite vast. It's covered everything from economics and history to culture, migration, and racial inequality. The main thing that he's done, in my opinion, is to cause people to rethink their assumptions about all sorts of things. Uh, not just economics, but about race, uh, about politics, about um, how, how we get along. Tom is absolutely fearless. I mean, he's forceful in his opinions. He will not compromise any of his opinions for the sake of social politeness. How do you take the measure of a man, especially if he's someone who's impacted our thinking about politics and economics for more than half a century? Do you do it through his deeds or influence? Or by what he says or writes? Perhaps Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge 
and controversy. The media, the television and the print media, they've wised up. You can't argue with Tom, so you might as well hide what he's doing. And that's what they're doing. They're, 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 they're just ignoring what he's uh, written because they, there's no way that they can argue with Tom Sowell.